Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another American Loco review. <laughs> So the American Locos that I've reviewed so far this year have been quite small ones, so I thought for this review I would pick a much bigger one to review. Now when I say a much bigger one, don't get too excited, I'm not reviewing the big boy or anything today, and by the way that is one of the most commonly asked questions I get really, is will you review the big boy? Now obviously yes I love the look of the big boys, it would be awesome to get one, but obviously it is affording it, they're not cheap, and also the track on my layout isn't really that great, so I'm not 100% convinced that it, if it would work properly, you know, if I bought one. But uh, either way I have got quite a large loco to show you today. It's a Mahano loco because the last Mahano loco I reviewed was very very impressive so uh, yes I've been uh, hungry to try another and so it is this. It's a Hudson as you can see. Now my favourite type of Hudson is the streamlined version and sadly this isn't a streamlined one however it was very inexpensive. I paid £45 for this on eBay uh, which is a really really good deal and uh, by the way these are still available new by the way you can still pick these up if you want to. They're on Amazon and they cost about £105 pounds I think uh, which is more expensive than I paid but mine isn't perfect it has got one or two small issues with it I'm not too bothered about them but if you wanted a brand new one they are still available and I'll include a link in the description but for the time being I uh, really can't wait to get this out it's been a long while since I reviewed a loco as big as this one so I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is like so come with me let's get this out and I really hope you enjoy it all right, so there it is in its big green box, and I have to say I do like the packaging on this one. The packaging looks much, much more modern than the 4401 did, and I think, if I remember correctly, there is a date on the inside of the box. I can't remember what that date is right now, but if I remember correctly, it was a lot more recent than the 440, which I think was in the 90s or something like that. So yeah, decent packaging. You can see the loco through the front there, as you can tell, and if I show you the end of the box, you can see a bit about what this is, although it doesn't tell you much. So it's a loco, it's a 464, as the Hudson where it's a Hudson Type A, there you go, it's number 1264, or is that the number? I don't know. Either way, it's Milwaukee, um, Mil Milwaukee Road, and then I suppose that's the number actually, number 127, so I don't know what 1264 slash 4850 is. Um, maybe we'll find out later on, but maybe that's the product code. I'm not 100% sure how Mahano did that. Uh, so, I think we'll get this out then. There's not much to see on the back of the box, although it does show you some of the other products that Mahano do, um, but uh, none quite as large as this, apart from perhaps the 482 there, but we'll get on to 482s another day. Ah, that's a bit of a hint for you for a future video. So let's get this out and see what it's like. So just so that you know, just so that you're up to date, obviously Mahano models aren't sort of super detailed, they're not top of the range or anything like that, but generally they are very inexpensive and also generally they're quite good quality as well and they're good runners generally too, so I'm hoping this will be the same. Okay, so I'll take the face off, uh, we do in fact, before I show you the loco, we do have a bit of paperwork and let me just have a quick look at the box, see if there is a date, because I'm sure there was. Let's have a look. Ah, yes, 18th of January 2007, so we're talking a little over a decade old, well 12 years. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. Oh, so we've got quite a lot of paperwork, blimey. Right, let's try and get some of the, oh my word. Okay, it's rather large, is this? <laughs> right, can you see this? I'll try and get some close-ups. So you've got exploded diagrams of all parts of the loco, you've got one for the tender, um, blimey, a little bit about digital sound, so apparently these are compatible with digital sound, that's quite impressive. Uh, on the back, oh it's just uh, an awful lot of text, I can see lubrication, oh and it's also in lots of different languages, okay, so I'll just show you the, the English version then. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, we will uh, look at that at another time, <laughs> if I can be bothered. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think there's anything uh, that could tell me that I won't know already, and I guess most of you guys will be the same. But uh, obviously do read them if you're beginners or something like that. So there we go, there is the Hudson, very, very nice. Uh, in quite a plain black livery, but I do quite like that from time to time. Okay, so I notice we've got a detail pack here. So I'm gonna take that out and show you. It doesn't look as though this one's been opened before, so, Blimey, your guess is as good as mine at what some of this stuff is. Uh, okay, so, well, we'll go easy. You can see some of the ladders there. We've got uh, what looks like uh, a knuckle coupler in there. I don't know if that's a working one. I suppose that might be just a dummy. Uh, you've got what looks like a shovel, a coal shovel in there. Uh, there's some um, painted parts. It looks like whistles or something. So there's quite a lot on there. I might 
have to look at the instructions and see if they offer any uh, answers as to where those go on the model. But generally speaking, I do leave those as they are, so I'll put that detailed bag straight back into the box. And to start with then, we will take a quick look at the tender. Let's get this out. So this is an articulated tender, as you can see, and it's actually got six axles on it, six axles and 12 wheels, and it is a massive tender. Uh, in fact, I think the only tender I've had that was, that was this large in the past was one of the oil tenders, so it has like an oil tank in the top there. But no, this one is coal, as you can clearly see, and uh, yeah, it is a massive thing. And uh, yes, I believe this does have tender pickups on it, which is very, very good. Uh, maybe wouldn't have needed them with it being a, a 464, but uh, yeah, it has got them, and that's pretty good. So we'll talk more about the tender in just a second but now let's get to the loco then i think that's the part everybody's interested in so let me try and do this safely there we are so this thing weighs a ton it really is terribly heavy now the bodywork is not made of die cast as far as i can tell it is an all plastic body however it does weigh a lot which again suggests that the uh, the chassis is going to be very heavy uh, so it's got a plug coming out the back as you can see that so we can plug it into the tender and uh, make use of the tender pickups and uh, crikey uh, yeah there's quite a lot of detail on this actually for what is quite a basic model uh, so i'm quite pleased with that that is uh, quite nice looking isn't it so we'll talk more about the the, uh, detail and things in just a second I'll hold these together so that you can see them so for the time being I'm going to give you a very quick history of the Hudson's if you were if you're interested in them uh, although they were quite famous so there's a good chance you will have heard of them already so let's do that and then we'll have a nice close look so the New York Central Hudson's were a class of high-speed 464 passenger locomotives which were first introduced in 1927. They were of course named after the Hudson River and these engines became very well known in the end for hauling some of New York Central's best known passenger services including the 20th Century Limited. Now a massive 275 of these were built in total between 1927 and 1931 but shortly after the introduction of diesels, a bit like what happened over here in the UK, sadly they were all withdrawn and scrapped and very unfortunately no Hudson's have been preserved. Okay so there it is then the Mahano Hudson up against the white background and it's only just squeezed into shot there it is very difficult to get this whole thing uh, onto the backdrop but I have just about managed it. So even though this is a beginner's locomotive and it costs £105 I must say you do get an awful lot of loco for your money, don't you? You really, really do. So, first of all, we will address a couple of the elephants in the room and a couple of the small downsides. First of all, you can see there is a pretty large gap between the loco and tender, and between that gap you can see we do have a bit of an ungainly wire going between the loco and tender. Now, don't pay too much attention to the colour of the wire, which is uh, red and white, uh, because the wires that came with the model were actually black, uh, but they're old and crusty and the plug was missing. So basically I went through my parts bin and found a new wire with a new plug and put that on there. The choice of colour isn't ideal, obviously red and white is a lot more conspicuous than just black cable, but to be honest I just wanted it to work, so I'm not too concerned about that. But obviously the way the wire sits there is a little bit unsightly, isn't it? And it's not what you'd call realistic, having a wire sort of splurging out from inside the cab and going towards the tender. And the other thing is, as you can see just on the pilot here, or just above it, you can see there are two holes with a blank space. Now, I believe there is another piece that's supposed to go on there, which fills the gap between the smoke box door and the pilot, but that is missing. Now, uh, the seller that sold me this on eBay for £45 said it was in as new condition, uh, so that isn't true. But however, I thought, well, it's still a good deal, isn't it, for £45, so I'm not going to split hairs over that. Uh, but yeah, I did notice that that was something that was missing. But the only other real issue is if we just look at the back of the tender you can see the ladder has been quite messily repaired by a previous owner there but again that's not a massive issue apart from that I can't see an awful lot of damage really on the model so I'm quite happy with it for what I paid so obviously there's an awful lot to see we won't be able to go into detail on everything but we will have a quick whistle stop tour so painted detail is quite minimal on this particular logo as per the livery but as you can see you do have the running number 127 on the side of the cab which has been uh, quite nicely applied as you can probably tell the smoke box area is a completely different shade of uh, grey well I'd say the main body is more of a black but the smoke box there is slightly more grey so I don't know whether that's just a different kind of plastic used or perhaps it was painted but 
but either way that's worth pointing out. And also this uh, area, I suppose it might be of the uh, firebox. Is it supposed to be a firebox? Maybe? I don't know. Either way, that is a slightly different shade of grey as well, uh, which I thought was worth pointing out. Now, as you can also tell, there is a massive amount of separately fitted work on this model. You'd expect that it would just be, you know, a clever mould and that would be it for the price. But no, there is an awful lot going on, particularly at the top, as you can see. Just look in front of the cab at all of this detail. Now, I won't pretend to know what half of this stuff is, but uh, as you can see, it is actually relatively well detailed. You've got these three metal pieces here. Again, they could be whistles. They could, well, I think they're probably more likely to be safety valves or something like that, aren't they? As you can see, those are made of metal, which is quite a nice touch but that does contrast with the whistle which is a little further on which doesn't look like it is made of metal that just looks like a painted plastic piece which does suggest a degree of inconsistency doesn't it but uh, at the end of the day it's not a huge issue and another thing I really like about this is the high shine handrail on the side of the model now on certain models the Helgen Tango is one I can think of that doesn't look very good but on this one I think it does it looks quite posh doesn't it so uh, yes I do like the uh, high shine handrail the high gloss handrail if we take a look at the smoke box Door, you can just see how much detail is going on there. Uh, first of all, just the moulded detail, look at that. It uh, really does look realistic. But on top of that, we've got another high shine handrail fitted around the bottom half of the smoke box door. You've got this very large lamp on the front, which I really like the look of, and I can't remember whether or not that actually works on this model, but I think, I think it probably does. And last but not least up there, you've also got a separately fitted bell, uh, which again is made of plastic and it doesn't go round or anything like that. But uh, either way, it does look relatively realistic, doesn't it? Which isn't too bad. I will show you the pilot area and the cow catcher because you can see there's quite a lot of detail going on there. You've got a separately fitted handrail and a few other separately fitted parts, including what I think is a sort of dummy knuckle coupler on the front of there. Although it is separately fitted because it does flex slightly when I touch it. So looking at the wheel set, you can see that the coupling rods and connecting rods are a little bit on the chunky side, but then again as uh, the sort of equivalent to a Hornby Railroad model, if you like. I suppose that is for the best. It makes the model quite nice and durable. But as you can see, the wheels are nice and shiny on this, and you've also got, well, they've used a sort of darker metal, I think, to make the axles. So the axles, the axle heads haven't actually been blacked out, but because they're made of a dark material, they, they don't stand out too much, which is good and clever if you ask me. That does work just fine. Now, the cab is quite interesting because there's no glazed windows or anything like that. Now, I'm no expert on American railroads and things, so I don't know whether the real things would have had glazed windows. If anybody knows for sure, do let me know. However, inside the cab, there is a lot of cab detail. None of it is painted, unfortunately. Uh, I think I was probably expecting that, though. But it must be said that there's an awful lot of detail going on back there, which is very, very impressive. So there we go. That's a quick tour of the Loco. Hopefully, you get a sense of the detail on this. It is quite impressive, isn't it? Obviously, some of the detail does look a little bit plasticky in places, but for the most part and for the price, I think it's a decent budget model, isn't it? So taking a look at the tender, which is massive by the way, it's easily as long as the Loco. Uh, the, the detail and the quality is similar really, although it is much lighter, but that makes sense because there's no mechanism or anything like that on board. So you've got a little bit of lining going on with the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific, uh, whatever that means on the side. Again, my ignorance shows through very slightly there, but uh, either way, it's nicely applied. You can see these really large bogies uh, with quite a bit of detail moulded onto the sides actually, which is quite good. And as I say, each axle on these uh, tender bogies does pick up power, which is very, very good. And of course that improves reliability quite a bit as well. Up in the top you can see we have a relatively realistic coal load. It's actually quite fine and good looking, which I think is uh, quite nice. Although, once again, as a budget model it is a part of the moulding, so it's not something that you can remove uh, without power tools, let's say. And you do have more separately fitted handrails, as you can see, they're not just moulded on on the tender. And around the back, we've already talked about the ladder, but you've also got uh, those high shine handrails as well, and also another LED lamp on the back, or it might be a bulb on this. No, I think it is LED. We'll have to double check that when it runs. If indeed it does work, I can't actually remember. <laughs> so, very, very nice looking. It is simple in places. There's uh, no cab detail, and there's quite a lot of plastic construction, admittedly. But I do think the price reflects that. So overall, you can't complain too much, can you, really? So let's get on to the part that we're all looking forward to. Let's get on to the performance and see how this works. It is going to look interesting, isn't it? Okay, so there she is then, my Mahano Hudson down onto the track. And looking at her like this, looking not too close, 
you would never believe that this was such an inexpensive model, would you? It really does look the part. And Mahano, well, from my limited experience of Mahano so far, it seems that they are really, really good at uh, getting the most out of uh, you know, a low price, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let's talk about performance then. Uh, and let's talk about the mechanism. So actually, in terms of pickups, as I've already said, you've got a lot of reliability here. You've got six pickups going to each line. Uh, obviously, only one pickup goes per axle on the tender. So even though you've got 12 wheels, only six wheels on the tender pickup, but all six driving wheels uh, do pick up on the loco. So actually, um, reliability on point work and such should never be a problem. Uh, of course, we'll test that and we'll see what it's like. But uh, yeah, in theory, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, in terms of the actual mechanism of the loco, I think think the motor inside there is just a three pole motor. I could be wrong so don't hold me to that because uh, I haven't actually opened up the motor and seen and counted the number of poles and uh, that's really the only way you can be absolutely sure but uh, based on the way this runs I would guess that it's only a three pole motor and something I do know is that there are no bearings on the wheel set which are which is unfortunate uh, sadly it does go straight to the chassis uh, the axles go straight to the chassis I should, I should say but they are in round bearings and not square ones so there's some improvement there. However, despite the relatively decent mechanism, it is a good smooth model, by the way, and as we're going to see, um, but despite all of that, it can't do a slow speed to save its life. It can do it's a sort of slow speed, but it, it won't crawl like a lot of uh, my locos do. So with that, let me try this. Let me speed it up a little. Well, turn it up a bit. You'll start to hear some buzzing quite early on. Let me be quiet and then you can hear. There we are. <laughs> and it kicks in at that speed there. And if I try to slow it down, it stalls. <laughs> but as you can see, when it does start to move, it's very good and smooth. Hey, he's a poet again. I'm starting to rhyme. <sighs> Try again forwards. You see, it wants to go. And I bet if I push it, it will. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not as though it only kicks in at a massive speed, but it's certainly not very happy um, <laughs> at slow speeds. I think that's just due to the size of it, really, the size of it, the weight of it. Um, it just doesn't have enough torque to move itself forwards. I wonder what happens. I wonder if it'll go any slower if I lift it up off the track. Yeah, it will. Let's try that. Sort of. I would say that's a bit slower, isn't it? Right, let me put this back on the track then, and I'll show you how it runs a little bit faster. By the way, it did just go over the express point during that test, and uh, it didn't cut out, so that's good. Uh, so let me give it a bit more speed about there. Let's bring it forwards past you. As you can see, that is very good and smooth. So overall, it does perform nicely, just don't expect it to do a crawl. Now, the eagle-eyed among you might notice that I've fitted a Hornby coupling to the back of this. I suppose any Americans watching will cringe horribly at that. Um, but that's because I wanted to use this particular loco with some of my British rolling stock. Uh, so, and I'm going to say this quite a lot this week. This is American week, by the way. And uh, yeah, just imagine that these locos are visiting a British railway for a week, and they're going to be hauling the British rolling stock. That's basically just a nice way of saying I haven't got any decent American rolling stock. I will keep my eye out for some though, but obviously uh, until then I've got to haul something with them. So as you can see, yes, I've got eight Pullman coaches here. That is quite a large train of Pullmans and I'm hoping it will be a good demonstration of how powerful this is because it is very heavy, as I've already said. So with that, let's turn the power up once more and go and get her coupled to her new British train of Pullmans. Right, steadily does it. I reckon this one might be hard to get a smooth coupling out of. No, it wasn't too bad. Right, I'm going to keep her going back. Back, 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 back. So hopefully you'll be able to see the lamp when I bring her forwards again. Now the front lamp is very dim. Yeah, I don't even know if you'll be able to tell, but it is lit there, but it's just very dim. But when I get some shots of the back of the loco in a second, you'll see that the one on the tender is a little brighter. Or in fact, maybe you won't because it only comes on when it goes backwards. But as you can see, with no problem at all, she's hauling eight Pullmans absolutely fine. Okay, so let me show you what else is going to be running. So I've got a bit of a challenge for you today because every other loco that's going to appear in today's video is part of a common theme. So let me bring in the first one. Now this is a bit more difficult. Obviously I do put these little challenges into most reviews, but this one's a bit more difficult than most. So I'll be very impressed if anybody gets what the common theme is. Uh, it's nothing complicated. It's actually something quite straightforward, but still I'll be quite impressed if anybody gets it. So there's the first one. It's uh, an, an A3. Is it an A3 or an A1? You know, I forget. But that's that. That is part of the theme. Um, and there is an odd one out by the way, so uh, don't let that fox you. And then on the inside line, 
Here's your second clue, and of course you'll see the other locos as we uh, film around the room. It's the Q1. So, all three locos you've seen so far have something in common, see if you can figure out what it is. Enjoy the running session, we'll see how the Hudson gets on with the Pullman, see if it makes it all the way around uh, one lap. Hopefully it will, let's see. So, because she's actually going in the opposite direction to normal, and I've done that because she's American, uh, the uphill section of the layout will actually be this. And uh, yeah, the room does slant very slightly. Uh, you can't tell with the spirit level, but you can tell with the locos. Uh, so yeah, this is the uphill section. This is where it's a real test. As you can see, there's no real wheel slip. Of course, it is a little bit easier in this direction because the track is straight on this side of the room, and on Gordon's Hill it curves a bit, and that's what makes it such a killer. But as you can see, she is hauling those eight coaches very, very nicely. And on top of that, she's very, very sure-footed on the track. She certainly doesn't, you know, none of the non-driven wheels jump off the track. The tender seems sturdy, even though it's not dreadfully heavy. It is a good, reliable runner, I must say. There it comes. I mean, even though it's not strictly correct to put her with Pullmans, I must say she looks good with them. I suppose they might have pulled Pullmans in America, of course, but uh, the American Pullman cars look a little bit different to ours, to say the least. Nice to see Woolwinder again, though, isn't it? And the Q1, of course. Both very nice Hornby runners. And if we're lucky, if the Q1 train gets out of the way fast enough, we should get the Hudson, yep. It is nice, isn't it? I mean, I know a lot of people say they prefer British locomotives and things, and that's fine. Obviously, I do mainly show British locos, but just for a bit of something different, it does look astonishing, doesn't it? Really, really nice. Okay, so here are some of my ratings then for the Mahano Hudson. Now, detail, it was very difficult to decide. I was going to give it three stars to start with because obviously there's no painted cab, there's a lot of plastic construction. But then I remembered all of that separately fitted detail on the model, on, especially on the top, and I just thought three stars sounds too harsh. I think four would be too generous because I've given more detailed models than this a four star rating before, so it wouldn't be fair if I did that. So I've decided to give it three and a half stars. You know I don't like to give half stars, but I have done that today just because I think uh, that makes the most sense. The performance then, I'm going to give it three stars. Now, at a normal speed, it is very good and solid. It's good and smooth. It's got great pulling capabilities, so there's no problems there. It's just it can't do a slow speed to save its life, and I think that does detract a little bit from the performance. The mechanism, similarly, it is a good, reliable mechanism. It seems to work very nicely. The gearing is good. It's got loads of pickups on the tender and on the loco, but of course that well, I think it's just a three-pole motor inside there. I could be wrong, but either way, it doesn't have a lot of torque um, to give that loco a good slow-speed performance. And on top of that, it doesn't have any proper bearings on the wheel set or anything like that, which does have to detract from the mechanism a little bit. So I've given that three stars as well. The quality, though, has to be pretty good, despite the massive amount of detail on this model. It is relatively sturdy. You can handle it quite easily and not have things break off. I have knocked off one star on the quality, though, just for that mechanism, for the small issue with the mechanism, and once again for just how much plastic construction there is on the model. However, value then for £104.95, that is the price you can get these for brand new, or second-hand price, which is considerably less, sometimes up to half that. I think the value for money there is absolutely incredible. If you think what you can get from Hornby, for example, for £100, and then look at this, it is a massive step up. So I have to give it a five star there, very, very good value. Overall then, that is 7.59 out of 10, certainly not a bad score for a budget model, and into the ranking it goes, there we go, ninth, just above the Dapol B4, and below the Railroad County. So it hasn't fared too badly against all of these top-of-the-line locos. So this has to be one of the oddest running sessions I've ever done. All of the locos are very, very different, aren't they? But uh, they do have one thing in common, as I say, or most of them.
So overall, I must say I am very, very happy with this. Clearly, I've got a lot of models that are much more detailed, and I've got a lot of models that run better. But for what it cost and for what it is, I do think it's a good deal, even at £105. Uh, so let me know what you think. Is this something you'd buy? Is it something you wouldn't touch with a barge pole? Uh, let me know. I'd be interested to find out. But for now, folks, I think that is all there is to say about this uh, very lovely Hudson locomotive. So as I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Do let me know in the comments whether you did or not. And uh, for the time being, thank you for your company. Thank you for watching. And I will see you very, very soon with some more videos. So once again, cheers, folks. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.